you're just kid. It's still a kid. Yeah, we're grown kids now, but kids. <laughs> When they call you PK, they can't call me no preacher kid. No, you better be call me a preacher's grown man. You know, <laughs> bro, I don't know, but I ain't no kid. Right. I'm a grown man too. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So everyone knows my dad as Reverend Run and as the rapper, but um, no, I really grew up in church. It's not just the rapper, like I am a PK. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before I even give you my business, I need you to subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Bells, let's go. Growing up in church, like as a PK, um, different. You spend a lot of your hours in church. I mean, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, maybe days in between for special things. Um, trying to drag my friends there, I remember that, which is different, because your friends are like, I don't wanna go to church on a Friday, and I'd be like, well, if you come Friday, we could do something Saturday, and then we gotta hit church again on Sunday. So, I spent a lot of time in church. I'm cool with it, but my friends was not messing with it. They were like, church? I'm like, yeah, like, this is what my household's like. I would say the funnest part about being a PK is, um, the people you meet growing up. And that sounds weird about it being fun, but to me, that is the fun part. Oh yeah, and the eating after church, that was kind of fun, I like food. Um, <laughs> but um, I feel like you just, you really grow family in church. And those are people who you can lean on even if you're not talking to them every day, but you build genuine connections, ones that last for a lifetime. And then the real fun part is eating after church. I mean, baked cakes and <laughs> all the food after a long service where you go to the back and get you a hot plate. <laughs> that's, that's real good. I wanna know about you guys. Anyone a PK, anyone grew up in church, anyone just religious, like share, share, share. I wanna know what do you believe in? What your spirituality beliefs are? What's keeping you grounded? I think it's so important to have something that keeps you grounded. So often for me, like I'll speak about coming from a prophetic um, background, which people don't, quite know, but being prophetic is seeing. You know, I like to break it down like this because I learned when I was younger that a prophet directs you. A psychic just tells you. A prophet is gonna redirect where you're going versus a psychic just saying, this is what's happening. A prophet's gonna tell you, don't go left because that's not gonna work for you, make a right. So it's guidance. I've had that guidance growing up, so I'm thankful for that. So it's like, not only did I have that guidance, but I was taught how to be intuitive, you know, and follow my intuition. We all have it, but we just don't activate it. It's about activating it. It's about seeing the right way. You know, I feel like we all have our like, you like, mm, I had that feeling. Everyone sees, feels, and hears differently. It was just activated at an early age for me. And so that just grows with time, you know? You're like, dang, like I kind of knew that. No, you have to learn how to trust it. That's God's messages to you. It's God telling you like, yo, this is not gonna work for you. I'm gonna need you to do this. This is not gonna work for you, go this way. And so growing up in that game changer, like just, it's different. It just opened my eyes, um, opened my third eye a lot, um, but also taught me things about business, about going for it, entrepreneurship. Just the idea of that being in the church world doesn't mean you don't have to have. Like we all can be successful. It's just about the steps and the tools to get there. You know, there's always a, like this perception that um, preacher doesn't have to have in the church because they think like, you know, like everyone has their own perception, but like, why wouldn't you want the person who's the head of a church to be able to have, you want that. It's like the head of your household has to have in order for you to have, in order for you to get gain knowledge. There's nothing wrong with that. And so, I don't know, I just learned early about success, what it looks like, risk, no risk, no reward, a lot. I learned in the church that people would be surprised that I learned there. Growing up as a PK definitely uh, it shaped my life. All of my faith, all of my like spirituality, like my grounding, who I am comes from that. Because without my faith, I honestly don't know where I would be. The amount of things that I've been through in life. There were moments where I could have gave up. And I mean, there's personal things that people may or may not ever know. There are moments in life where, you know, you have the question mark of what do I do next? You know, and I just feel like my faith has kept me. God has kept me. My prayers and genuinely seeking the truth and finding it through prayer has made me who I am. Without it, I I wouldn't be here, honestly, because I just, I, I can't imagine what my life would be, be like without 
being able to be grounded the way I am. I mean, I'm anchored and I'm anchored in like Christ and God, like I'm anchored, like I know my purpose, I know why I'm here. And having that background just only excelled it. It only made me stronger, it only made me better. It only gave me individuals that I can lean on as I'm growing to this day if I have doubt. You know, I have people that I can call that will help guide me through that and I just feel like it made me. You know, honestly for me, I'm such an absorber that I was, when I was younger, I feel like I was just absorbing what was around me. You know, I wasn't sure. You don't know when you'll use it in life. You don't know when it makes sense. When you're a kid, I mean, how many worries you have other than like small things. I think as you grow, you realize that all of the teachings you've been learning are actually preparing you for life. And so I just learned and I grew and I continue to grow. You know, I'm a work in progress and I am appreciative for the knowledge I've learned, that I've gained, and that I continue to have. The stuff that I do now with my son, you know, I, I've taught him at least the basics, so it's not overwhelming. Pray at night, pray over your food. You know, I'll ask him before at night, he get on his YouTube, I say, what else you have to do when you get off? To pray. And one thing I've learned in prayer, before you come to God and ask for anything, tell him thank you. Tell God thank you. You need to be thankful for what you have before you can receive the next blessing. How can I come to God and not be thankful for the roof over my head, the food that I have? You know what I mean? Like I have to be thankful for that and then God will give me more. If I come with this closed off heart, how can I expect God to bless me? You know, so I teach him when you pray, be thankful. So God, thank, thank you for everything. I don't care what you're, I care if you're thanking him for your toys, you know? And so I'll hear him in his prayers with his thank you. And then when he prays over his food, he's thankful. I just think it's important to, you know, have gratitude, you know, and really know where's it coming from. Whatever your source is that you're connected to, I know where my faith is, but you know, that's just how I feel about it. I feel like with being a PK, you're automatically judged, right? Before you even hit a room, before you talk to someone, if they know that you're a PK, either A, they're really wild, or you're supposed to be very strict. There's like no room for in between. So it's kind of crazy. It's like when people think or know you're a PK, they're like, yo, like you're supposed to be living like this, or you can't wear this, or you can't do that. Like yet, they shouldn't be judging no one. Best, how about that? It's kind of crazy to me, I don't know. I feel like for me being a female and a, that one that is like, you know, like I like to be sexy. So I get a lot of scrutiny for that. Like you can't wear bikinis. And I'm like, so what do I wear? Like, I know that you guys think because I'm Christian, I can't do this and I can't do that. But hey, who are you to even judge me? Like I'm living my life and I know that I'm doing the right thing and my heart's in the right place and I'm doing the proper things and I pray and I know what I got going on. I believe in Christ. Like you're not gonna sit here and judge me. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. It's a, re it's a really interesting space to be in. We come from hip hop first and then our dad became a reverend and, and growing up in church again has been a blessing, but it's still in us. Like I'm still hip hop. Like I'm still, this is who I am. It makes me who I am. I'm, Got a little bit of this, a little bit of that in me, and it's like the ingredients, right? Like, I don't know. I would say that my little brother, Jojo, Diggy, Rusty, like they were really involved in like the church, like doing all of the like inside stuff, film. Like our church had film, like in the church. So like they were underneath that, like they know how to use cameras. You know what I mean? Like we were learning some real skills in church. And so they would do that. I mean, I used to like to go to children's church and help and stuff like that, you know? I'm not gonna lie, once in a while, I used to wanna, you know, go to Rite Aid or something if my parents needed something so I can get out of church. I'm not gonna lie, God forgive me, I was young, come on. But <laughs> I used to wanna escape, like I used to be in church a lot. I spent a lot of hours in church and I, you know, I really wouldn't change it. I think honestly having the pandemic right now kind of sucks because Sundays is like, that's my day, like to go to church and it's been like online ministry now, but I love fellowship and I love being around like, you know, like, my people, so it's been different with the church. I feel like in church, things were funny when they weren't supposed to be, that's the problem. Uh, you know, you're sitting there and it's quiet and they're like, everyone get up and then like, you just look at your, your sibling or something happened, like my sister or my brother and they're like, <coughs> and now it's dead quiet and it's not the time to be laughing. The inappropriate time to laugh was when you were laughing in church and now you're in trouble and your dad's looking at you from stage like this. And I'm like, you know, or you're falling asleep or you're being tapped, like wake up get up and you're like, oh, okay. I mean, it was so hard to not be tired if we're there late at night and 
all of a sudden the word and you just drifting, drifting. Like that used to happen to me. Like it was, that was different. It was, um, church is different, you know? You always needed little snacks and candies and stuff. That stuff I looked forward to. <laughs> it's kind of random, but yeah. I mean, y'all don't even really get it. Let, let me call my brother on this one. I'm about to call him right now. He's, he'll tell you. Yo. Jojo. What up? Do you remember, like, first of all, I'm talking to him about being a PK. Yeah, so I was telling them about growing up in church. Like, do you remember, A, we used to be there missing stuff, they're mad late. Do you remember all that? You know what used to be crazy was Friday, because we used to do, go to church. Tuesdays, Fridays, Sundays. Every day! <laughs> and I was a junior addict, but the crazy thing was, I used to want to go to Queens on Friday to go hang out with my friends, but there would be times where, you know, our church was a little bit untraditional, which, you know, which was cool because it was, it was a great church. And it is a great church, but it was like, sometimes we got out at 10 p.m. No, 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 later. How about midnight? Remember we would get out like midnight? Halloween and stuff like that, those were the special days where we used to get out at like midnight. Oh, it was deaded. Like all of the holidays? No. We'd be falling asleep, trying to stay up in church. And then getting in trouble for falling asleep. Well, you gotta say it from the <laughs> I'm doing a full work shit. The thing I always tell other people is, um, before I'm a preacher's kid, I'm a rapper's kid. So I would follow a rapper that turned into a preacher. So I feel like we have the best of both worlds when it's, we're faithful, we understand God, we understand the Bible, we understand church, we understand what it is to be, you know, good people at heart and do things and be faithful in God, but we also understand that, you know, we have, you know, we have a hip hop side to us too. That, you know, we, we like we like to be outside. We like to dress fly. We like to be into the hip hop music, you know? And, and it's not, a, and to me, there's not an issue with that. You know, it's all about balance. And, and I think that um, we have the best balance. We're not just preacher kids. We're, we're, we're kids of a, of, a, of a legend too. We went to a non-traditional church. So it was just different. Like we learned about how to make money, businesses, like all types of stuff at an early age. How to, how to, you know, how to be able to live in the power of now. Yep. You know, how to, how to manifest what we want. Yep. You know what I'm saying? How to work hard, how to, you know, just everything. And how to know to be patient that sometimes it's not going to come when you want it, but when God wants you to have it. Exactly. Those lessons definitely uh, were very vital to my life. Yeah. And I, uh, the way I am now. And it's stuff that people are learning now. It's like, yo, we were learning that when we were like 15. 14, like young, but um, yeah, I just feel like I, was, I remember like probably eight years. Old. We were young. Well, I was older than you because you're younger than me. Don't forget. By two years, and you're really like my. No, no, no. I'm the bigger. I'm. The, I'm no. Mm -mm, I'm. I'm older. My older little sister. No, I'm not your little sister. I'm your big sister. Okay. I know. The same way about your sister Dave. That's your older little sister, right? No, 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 no. Thank you for joining me, and I know you're busy, so. Problem, man. Just know, like I said, a preacher's kid is still a kid. Yeah, we're grown kids now, but kids. <laughs> like when they call you PK, they can't call me no preacher kid. No, bet you call me a preacher's grown man. <laughs> Bro, I don't know, but I ain't no kid. Right. I got a grown man too. Yeah, like my experience in uh, church growing up was always different, right? Because we grew up in this non-traditional church, A. So we used to try, I used to try to drag my friends with me on Tuesdays and Fridays to church and be like, you stay over for the weekend. But then on Sunday we had to go to church. So if we went out on Saturday, doesn't matter how tired you are. My dad used to call in the announcement thing in the house. Like we had like intercom, get up. We work, we play hard, we work hard. And we pray hard, get up. We'd be like, well, we just got home, let's go. I mean, it was crazy. So like growing up underneath that, I feel like you don't appreciate it until you're older. Like when I was younger, I was like, dude, like I just wanna have a Friday to myself. Cause church would start at like five on Fridays or six. And we'd be there from six to like 12 plus. Knocked out, falling asleep, waking up. Like it was crazy. But just being underneath that anointing, uh, honestly, has really helped me so much in life now. And the lessons that the bishop of our church was teaching us, like we just learned a lot early. Like the bishop of our church is so beyond his times and the things that he has taught us, I love. I guess hearing, you know, the stuff about being a PK, I've thought about, but I'm one of those people who I'm like, you don't like it, I'm sorry for you. Like, I am I know what I'm doing in my life and I know I'm living right and I'm doing the right thing, so I don't let it really affect me. Like, y'all can say what you wanna say. If you're not on the same page as me, keep flipping, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs>
So I actually have this tattooed on one of my shoulders. And so here it is. It's um, 1 Corinthians 13, four through seven. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. So I just love that. Like I truly believe in love and I feel like when you love, those are the keys to life. To me, that scripture is just like one that I really love. I'm really big on love and so really hearing the meaning of love, especially through a scripture, is everything. Do your best to do your best in life and um, yeah, it'll never let you down. I feel like it's important to keep your faith and to love. Guys, that really is one of my favorite scriptures. Um, listen, keep your faith, keep loving, do what you do. Subscribe. <laughs> I love you guys.